Hi, welcome to episode 11 of Data Every Day. Today we'll be looking at a data set of students' performance in exams and trying to predict their scores based on a number of features. All right, so let's open up a new notebook right here. And we're just going to start by importing our usual uh, <clears throat> libraries. So we have NumPy, we have Pandas. Uh, today we're going to use Pandas profiling, uh, profile report. This will help us get a better sense of the data. We'll use the label encoder because uh, there were a number of categorical labels that were text labels. And the label encoder will allow us to turn it into numerical labels. SKLearn.preprocessing. We'll use the standard scalar. And always train test split. And then for our model, we'll use linear regression. This is not a classification problem, but a regression problem. OK, let's import that. Let's take a look at our data. So we use pandas read CSV. And we get the file path over here. Copy that. Put it right there. Let's check it out. All right. So we have eight different features. Well, uh, it's hard to say which one of these we want to use as our labels. Because we could use any one of these three scores. And we also have to decide if we want to include the other scores in our prediction for a, a given score. So to understand how this data is related, uh, we're going to create a profile report. Called report. It's a profile report of our data. So I'll just take a second to load up. It's going to find all the correlations between our data and present it in a nice way for us to see. <clears throat> then down here, I'll just say uh, report dot to notebook iframe. We can hide this output. And here it is. All right. So uh, we can see. All right. Let's skip ahead to correlations. This is what we're interested in. Oh oh oh! Right. So you can see only the numerical values have correlations. That makes sense. But first, before we do this uh, profile report, let's convert all of these text labels into numerical labels. So we can do that with the label encoder. Uh, encoder is label encoder. And what we're going to do is for each column, we're going to uh, fit it to the label encoder. And then we will rewrite the column as its numerical equivalents. So for the gender column, say it's encoder dot fit transform. The gender column. And then we'll get a series of, of mappings. Um, we'll just get a dictionary that will show us which numbers are being mapped to which text. So we'll, we'll say uh, gender mappings. It's going to be a dictionary. Of, uh, sorry, not data. Index to label. For every index and label in the enumerate object of um, the encoder dot classes attribute. So encoder has a, a list called classes that just contains all of the uh, the classes that it tr uh, turned into numbers in order. So by enumerating it, we'll have an index that gives it the actual uh, numerical label, and the label here will be the text label. So if we just run that, we can see gender mappings looks like this. Zero has been converted to female. One has been converted to male. So our other way around, female to zero, male to one. 
but now we'll be able to, to uh, process this data and you can see it's been performed. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll do that for all of the text columns. So there's four more. Let me just... Okay. This one is race and ethnicity. Put that in there. We'll call this ethnicity mappings. This is parental level of education. Call it parent education mappings, and we're just making these mappings in case we ever want to look back and see uh, uh, what what a, an, a zero, for example, in the gender column means. Okay, and we have this at the end. Let's get rid of that. Okay, lunch. Uh, so lunch mappings, and lastly, it's test preparation course. So we'll call it test prep mappings. Okay, I just want to reload this since we already we want to reconvert the gender in one go. All right, this should do it to all of our our columns, and we reload up the data, and you can see there are no longer text labels. So that that's really good for us. And if we ever want to know what a four in parental level of education was, we could just check out check out the parent education mappings to give us that answer. Okay, so now we'll generate our profile report. Okay. And check it out. Alright, fantastic. Now let's go to correlations. And we can see now we have a a full list of correlations between every um, value. So it looks like, wow, there are there's very little correlation between almost exactly zero. Look, it's it's perfectly white in many of these. Gender, race, ethnicity, parental level of education, and lunch and test prep course has very little to do with predicting math score, reading score, writing score. Actually, it has less so to do with predicting itself, which makes sense. It has a little bit to do with predicting uh, math score, reading score, writing score. You can see right here. But math score, reading score, and writing are incredibly uh, positively correlated among themselves. So I think it would be safe to say maybe we can predict writing score only given math score and reading score. And so maybe all of these columns, gender, race, ethnicity, parental level of education, lunch, and test prep course, really don't help us uh, predict at all. I mean, very, very minimal compared to this. This looks like we could just use these three. So let, let's go ahead and we'll just drop all these. We don't need them anymore. So what basically our task is now, let's, um, let's, find, let's find math score given reading score and writing score. Let's find reading score given math score and writing score. And let's find writing score given math score and reading score. All right, so now that we have that, let's uh, let's see, what, what, what do we do next? All right, let's divide our data. So let's say x is just going to be um, the portion of data that is just these three these three columns. So if you look at data again, data is this. We're just going to select these three and make that our x to start. So math score, reading score, writing score. Okay. Take a look at x. And perfect. That's what we want. We're going to be using, we're uh, further going to split our x into three different x's and we're going to train three different models. Um, and we'll also get three different Y's. So the Y's are easier to do first. We'll say um, Y math is equal to, uh, not X, uh, we'll use X here. X, hmm. Let's 
Interesting. I'm wondering if we should scale our data before we declare the whys. Shouldn't matter so much. Yeah, let's not. Let's keep it. So we'll use, we'll say, uh, why math is going to be x math score y reading will be x reading score y writing will be x writing score okay now you can see why math looks like this just this column uh, and you can guess what the other two look like so now let's take our x's and let's let's make uh, three different x's. X math, x reading, and x writing. So x math is going to be um, the portion of. Hmm. Let's scale it first. We we don't want to scale three different uh, variables, three different data data sets, data frames. We want to scale the for the. Uh, the full x and then break it up. So we'll say scalar is going to be standard scalar. This is from the sklearn library. And then x will be uh, scalar.fittransform x. Now this will uh, fit the scalar to x data and then transform x based on that fit. But let's turn it, this will actually return a numpy array. So let's turn it back into a data frame. And we'll say that its columns are going to be uh, x's columns. So we're going to retain the columns. OK, we run that. We check out x again. You can see everything's just been scaled down uh, to have unit variance. And OK, let's see. Now we'll do these guys. So xmath is going to be the portion of this scaled data frame uh, but not the math score because for xmath we're going to be using reading score and writing score to predict our ymath which is the math score so this will be a reading score writing score and this guy reading will be math score writing score and this guy writing will be math score reading score see we're using everything except uh, the one that we're trying to predict for these x's okay so we run that just to take a look to what it looks like x math should be good reading and writing x reading will be math and writing x writing will be math and reading. Okay. So now we can split our data into train and test sets. So we will call train test split, but we're going to do this for uh, for, for we're going to do this three times. One for our maths, one for our readings, one for our writings. So we'll say x math train X math test, Y math train, Y math test equals train test split, uh, X math, Y math. And since this is a relatively small data set of a thousand examples, we'll use a train size of 70%. Okay, we'll do that again, this time for the reading. Here, I'll just Copy paste reading in here a bunch of times. And writing over here. Whoops. Okay. All right, we run that. Just to take a look at it, x math is the original x math. Oh, sorry, x math train. I should do the original x math, but only 700, 70 percent. 
and x math test should be the same thing, but 300 examples. Right. Great. Okay. So now, make sure everything's good here. Okay. We will start making our models. So we imported linear regression model, and we'll make a math model, uh, which will be linear regression object. And oops, we'll do the same thing for reading and writing. We'll make a reading model and a writing model. Okay. All right. Um, now we're going to fit them to their respective data sets. So math model dot fit, and we will use it with x math train x math test. And this will be reading for reading math train. Uh, sorry, <laughs> x reading train and x reading test. And this one will be for writing. Okay. And after we fit them, we're going to calculate the uh, their coefficients of determination or r squared values. So. This will just be the what the score function for the linear regression object returns, since uh, there's no sense of accuracy with regression. This is a better idea of how our model is performing. So math model dot score, and we're going to use the x math te test and the y math test to evaluate it on unseen examples, and we'll do the same thing for the other two. This will be reading. Reading math, uh, reading model dot score, and x reading, and y reading. This one, oh great, <laughs> we just put that up there then. And this one will be writing. Okay, and let's run that. Oh, we must have passed it incorrectly. Oh, we put the tests up here. What is I thinking? This should be Y train. Uh, y reading train. Y writing train. Okay, so we have X math train, Y math train. Good, good. Then X math test, Y math test. Yeah, this should be good, okay. Alright, now let's print it out. I guess we're done. Let's just see how it did. So we'll make an f string and we'll say math r squared value. It's going to be the math r2. And this one will be the reading r squared value. Reading r2. This will be writing and writing. Okay. And well, wow, fantastic. All right, so what do we notice? This makes a lot of sense. Reading and writing are very easily predicted. Math, not so much. That probably is because reading and writing are very similar. Like, if someone's doing well in reading, they're probably doing well in writing and vice versa. But not, not necessarily with math. These guys, writing, reading and writing, are not great predictors of well, whether someone will do well in math. But reading is a great predictor of writing, and writing is a great predictor of reading. And that's why we see such high R squared values for reading and writing, but not as high of one for math. Alright, thanks a lot for watching today's video. Um, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, and hit the subscribe button, and leave any comments below uh, for any suggestions uh, for the channel. So I'd really like to make improvements based on what you guys think. All right, thanks a lot. See you tomorrow.